Hey everyone, welcome to another Airbrush Asylum Raw video. Today we are going to create an artwork using another set of Airshot templates. Um, they've been kind enough to send them out to us. This time these ones are transparent. And um, there are two parts to this template. So we have the uh, negative part, which you can see here. It's actually the outline of a bat. Um, it's gonna be like a demon-y sort of bat. And I've sprayed a bit of spray adhesive on the back um, as we are working upright um, on a aluminium composite panel. And I'll show you the other part. This is the positive, okay. So same thing, put a bit of spray adhesive on the back of that as well, just so we get a bit more adhesion, okay, to the panel. So let's go and line this up. So I think we'll go about there. I think that's pretty good. Just tap that down. It should stick reasonably well. We can still put some masking tape on there as well, just to protect the panel. So it'd be interesting to try this see-through material. So I'm just gonna mask up the bottom of this. Some of this is out of shot anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Cropped a little bit of that there. Peel that back, mask the bottom, and you'll notice that this template's got registration marks again, um, so we'll mask them up as well, just to protect them at the moment, but we will utilise them when we lay the positive over the top. Just a bit of tape there and there. So as I mentioned, this is an evil sort of bat design, so we're going to use numerous different um, colours except we want it to be more of a reddish type of demon bat, okay? So let's start, we're gonna start off with orange, um, and we are using, for this particular video, a lot of videos we use Trident, but in this particular video we're using Createx uh, illustration colors. So I just thought we'd try something a bit different. And we're gonna, from a distance, get a coat of orange on the whole negative area of this template and this will give us our base for the bat artwork that we're working on. Just try and push this down a bit. This one's sticking up, doesn't matter. Get a bit of overspray, we can fix that later with the darker tone. Um, I'm also gonna paint in a bit of a background, so not too worried at this stage. So we just wanna get reasonable coverage on that. Doesn't have to be super, super heavy and fully saturated. We just want to get a bit of that orange tone on there. I've actually run out of orange. So let's just keep coating. Getting a bit of build up on the edge of this template. Hopefully that doesn't uh, stuff us up in any way. Again, not too concerned as I will be using the positive part, which they also supply, which is this bit here. And when we finish our bat, I'm gonna lay that over the top and that will allow me to spray in the background. Okay, so. Give that a nice dusting. Pretty happy with that. Gonna let that dry a little bit and now I'm gonna get another airbrush with white in it. And what I'm gonna do is now lay the positive template over the top of what we've done. And I'm gonna spray white to create our highlighted areas, just so we can see where we wanna go with it. Just carefully remove these bits of masking tape to expose our registration marks 
like so. Grab our positive template, which is this one here. Let's make sure that it's dry, which it is. Using our rego marks, line it up. And then when we're happy, sit down, it might be a bit easier. That one there, that one there. And don't just rely on the registration marks, look at the actual template and where it's situated. So pretty happy with that. And we're gonna tap that down. Again, we don't want, you don't wanna to spray too much uh, spray adhesive on the back of these. We want them to still be reasonably easy to remove and we definitely don't want to leave any glue so less is more okay now i've got a bit of looks like a bit of paper towel or something stuck onto this bit here so we'll just pick that off with a blade like so give that one more pat down that seems to be holding well enough not perfect but it will do and now we're going to go and coat over all of these areas and this will give us just a wider highlight on top of our orange and just a bit of a guide to where some of these areas are you know the splits in the wings and the, the other parts to the design So I'm going to go a little bit heavier so you can see it a bit easier on camera. You can see that template is lifting quite a bit so we're not, going to, oh, we're not going to get a sharp image but you can see that spray adhesive didn't hold that greatly. So luckily with our rego marks here we can line it up again because what I did want to just add in was I was pretty much done with all that except I want to brighten up the eye so just carefully brighten that and I think these are teeth so we'll just do the same there one two three four I don't know if that's meant to be a tooth but we'll leave that one out and take that off and then we have it now we need to mask up our rego marks again so we don't get overspray, believe it or not, even though they're up there, you could still easily get some overspray on those. Okay, so now we've got our white, okay, so you can see a bit of the, the outline of the, the actual bat there. Now what we want to do is start adding our shadow tones and for that I'm going to start with a burnt umber, which is essentially a bit more of a reddy brown. So with this tone now, I'm just going to shape all my shadows and add in the detail. Not too worried at this stage. Wait till that compressor finishes.
So just using this tone to pretty much make up all the details. I'm not worried about being super duper fine at this stage because I know I'm coming in with a with my micron and a darker tone. Might add another tooth over here. So you can add bits and pieces obviously to your design as you're painting. Remember it is a freehand template so you want to treat it as such. Darken off in the mouth here. So you can see how nicely this particular tone blends with that orange that we added first. So I'm kind of just trying to figure out what all the lines and everything mean and make it up from there. I'm not worried about getting all of the detail in there as yet. It's more about just establishing some shapes and shadows and adding a bit of texture and detailing in at this point. It can still be a bit um, rough at this stage.
and even allowing some of my paint to kind of spider out a little bit in spots. It um, adds a little bit more to the texture of the airbrush. A lot of the time the airbrush is just way too smooth and I think for these sort of fantasy artworks having a bit of that texture in there doesn't go astray. So by letting it, by running your paint a bit thinner, you know, you can gradually build up some spots that are a bit heavier and sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that can actually add to the effect. So again, just really trying to get this all mapped in. Pulling the detail out of these wings. Shading these ears a bit more. See there how I spidered it out a little bit. Starts to create a bit of a divot. So I think almost there with this tone. Again, we don't want to go crazy and spend too much time on it. Essentially, we just want to define the um, bat character and then we can elaborate on that with the darker tone. Add some shadow in the eyeball as well. I want to keep these relatively simplified. I'm not going to go too crazy detailing because I want these videos to be helpful to beginners. Because um, majority of the people that are using these sort of templates are, you know, either just starting out or, um, you know, not the best at drawing. So they use these uh, freehand templates to get the design laid out for them. Um, but you still do need freehand skills to. To render them and that's the way they should be treated as a freehand template so don't just uh, coat them solid color and expect to just work off that you want to um, shade them a little bit as well and just shape the, uh, the whole design so let's get some uh, we'll get some red in there as well um, let me just clean out a gun quickly Before we go red, I might actually add some yellow in the eye. And then we can shade on top of that as well. So, just coat the eye with a bit of yellow. There we go. Doesn't need much, just a little bit. Just cleaning out the yellow now, and I'm going to switch to red.
Okay. Now we have red. So this particular red that we're using is the Illustration Scarlet. Okay. And what we're going to do with that is firstly we're going to render this or just add some red to the tongue. To make that pop out. Finger there. To get some coverage. Okay, so it's the tongue and I'm gonna, while I've got it, shade a little bit in the eye. Like so. And then we might also just dust over certain areas in the wings just to make it a bit uneven. Don't want the bat to look too pretty. Get on the tail. I'm presuming that's the tail. All right. So before we go on to dark highlights, ah, sorry, dark shadows, we're going to do some uh, white highlights. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, just using the Createx white. I'm going to start, oh, if it performs for me. So we're just going to hit the areas that we want obviously a highlight on. So at the moment I'm kind of working off, you know, a light source about here. Again, not too concerned at this stage on having it super detailed. We can come back in and um, brighten it up again at the end. But I just want to get a bit of the white on there before I go ahead and do my sepia. Just going to add a bit more detail to this piece. bit of tip drawing here so apologies for that just turn the pressure up a little bit that can help you out just want to run some of these fine veins to pick up on those high spots in the wings See that's starting to pop it out a bit more on the tongue. Now that we've turned the air pressure up, the white's flowing nicer, but the template's not loving it. So that's okay. Some little Fluffy bits on the side of his head there. Um, same thing, we're going to do those veins. Bit of unevenness in the wings. Render the tail. So 
some dot highlights in the corner of the eyes there for that wet look and we might just add a bit more of a shine there and I think for the moment that'll do I think we'll turn flip over to the sepia with black and we want to start adding detail now so like I mentioned this is sepia but it's got black mixed into it just to get it a bit darker than the normal sepia so we're going to go ahead now and deepen all the shadows and pull out more of the detail overall just doing a few practice strokes here and I'm going to start in the uh, the safe areas which is inside the mouth here that's if this airbrush performs for me doesn't want to perform apologies for this my airbrushes seem to never perform when I'm filming these raw videos I don't know what it is I mean I clean them all the time just their temperamental things. Horrible. Just uh, cleaning out another gun here so I can uh, see if this one will work better for us. This is a, uh, an older Micron that I've got but usually it performs reasonably well so let's see if this one doesn't play out for me. It's a little bit single action as in the trigger stuck down but I'm not too worried about that so Let's try again. Seems to be better. Let's 
still not 100%, but... And mixing the black with the sepia allows it just to blend a bit nicer, it takes that edge off the black. Still not 100% this airbrush, but it's, it's definitely uh, better than the previous, so I'll just persist with this one.
adding some texture there on the wings as I go. I might actually um, grab a texture template in a minute and add a few of those uneven sections in there but just doing a bit freehand at this stage. Wings getting there now. Still having some dramas with this airbrush, but just persisting for you guys. A similar thing now with the other wing, just remembering where my light source is and where the shadows would fall.
starting to really pop that out a bit more. Add some shading into this tongue. Decent enough effect going on there. I think I might just get a texture template, one I haven't even tried before. I'll give it a give it a bit of a shot on this because I think it might work. Just to add a few a few of these sort of textures into these wings here, just lightly dust them over. Yeah, it's working nicely. Don't need too many, just a little bit here and there. to break up that smoothness from the airbrush. I mean, you could spend a lot more time on this artwork, so if you did end up purchasing this template, um, at the moment we don't sell them, but um, we are planning to in the not so distant future, so they will hopefully become available soon. We're just um, testing them at the moment, all these templates, and seeing which ones, you know, we would stock. Might actually get this little guy as well and add a bit more texture to the bat, to his head. And also use this in the, the wings too. careful not to overdo it. You can get carried away with templates but kind of trying to make it or use it a bit in the eye. There you bit of texture in that eye and I might actually get the white just utilize that as well that's it just to get a bit of right, highlights there Add a bit of effect, and we can do the same on the forehead. Okay, do a bit of do a bit of drool as well in a sec. Just can come in now and. Brighten a few sections.
adding some wet spots in the mouth here. Brightening up a few sections here and there. Pretty happy with that so far. Just go back to the black for a minute. Just to neaten up that eye. Mainly just in here where it's the white spattered on me a little bit. Just clean that up. Like so. A bit of a gap there but I kind of like that actually I think that's working nicely render that down a little bit so it looks like the it's going into the back of its mouth that's what I mean you can keep playing around with it I don't want to spend too long on it. It is, after all, just a freehand template. But what we might do now is, I think I'll quickly add in a bit of red violet just to blend from these dark spots down. Um, and then we'll do a background with the texture template and we're all done. So that's the red violet. And the plan is to just, where the darker areas are, that we um, use the sepia mixed with black. So in here, mainly just in the wing area, I want to separate that by using this tone, or this color. I want to separate that a little bit and distinguish it from the rest of the body of the bat. So, I'm hoping my hunch works that this will add a bit of an effect. So just a little bit in the darker spots. Like so. I mainly want it to appear like a, a bit of a graduated tone. And I'll Hit a little bit down here as well. That's, yeah, I think that's working. I 
Again, I'm going very lightly, I'm not going too heavy. I just want the inside of that wing to have a different appearance. that yeah that's that's definitely helped so let's go on and do the background now so we need to remove this let's hope there's no glue left behind a little bit of a dodgy edge but sort of happened from the orange which I think I mentioned before you can see there it's bled underneath a little bit but that's all right I'll show you how to fix that before we move to the next step you could obviously just uh, mask it up with our positive which we're going to do in a minute but let's say you weren't going to put a background on there how would you remove that I'll show you how get our trusty little cotton bud and a bit of Windex and I'm just going to spray spray on that and then carefully remove it if this doesn't work it should but it's probably gripped a little bit onto the sanded surface of the LU panel but we've definitely put a dent in it so let's try again using the other end now so that's not really doing a great deal anymore just put a little bit of gun wash on there and either gun wash or normal reducer will do it that'll take it straight off still have a slight stain but you know what I'm not too worried because we're going to mask that little bit off and do a bit of a background just a, a rough background meaning just a textured sort of background so you could also come back in now and and um, fix up all those little areas it does have a little bit of the um, spray adhesive marks on there so keep that in mind when you do do it we'll see how it goes with the spraying I'm going to spray the back of this now with a spray adhesive as well spray adhesive tack off a little bit for anyone that's interested this is the spray adhesive that I'm using okay so you can see I've sprayed the back of that and just letting that tack off so I can mask him up and we'll see how good this template works once we line it up we'll see how effective it is hopefully it doesn't peel off any of the paint so if this is your first time to the channel we do lots of um, raw videos like this live oh, well live we call them pre-live because um, we pre-record them but they're still live uh, format 
We also do showcase quick tips and a lot of different videos that are all airbrush related. So if you like this sort of content, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon and that'll notify you whenever we put out some new content. We try to do uh, weekly content and we're trying to up that as well. So um, yeah, we'd love to have you as part of our, our community. So if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe and join us and hopefully it'll inspire you to go and get your airbrush and create some more amazing artwork. And I hope these videos help you to do that. Okay, so now we need to line this up as best as we can, like so. Tap it down. And like that. It's not really sticking that bit, but it's okay. All the rest is. So let's use our original sepia mixed with black and we're just going to spray a quick textured background I don't want to spend too long on the background I just want to get something on there for you so you can dust over it first and kind of work our way around the edge that way that'll eliminate any of the um, bleeding and stuff that we've got coming underneath that template. So we'll do that freehand first so we get a bit of coverage. Use your finger. You can see I'm getting a bit of texture but that I think is from the spray adhesive so I know now so just be careful if you are using aluminium panel so I don't use a great deal of spray adhesive myself um, I don't usually use freehand templates a lot I mainly just use the um, textured ones so I'm really just doing this for you guys to show you how to create artwork from some of these templates that we were sent by Airshot so appreciate them sending them out so that we can do these videos and hopefully help you guys out a bit but um yeah i actually don't do a great deal of airbrushing with templates most of my stuff is freehand so i'm just going right around that artwork with the darker tone first and now we're going to lay this on and by lifting it up you can get a softer blend like that and by laying it flat you can get a harsher one so it can vary that out too. We'll feather that out like that. Again you can you know spend your time and do a proper background this is really just adding some grunge so that we've got something there to show you and I want to give you a demonstration that when I unmask it if it all works well <laughs> fingers crossed it um, it should really pop this design out again just working my way around So I'm lifting it and laying it flat using different parts of the template to get different effects. So almost done. Kind of looks cool already. So as I taper it out on the edges I'm just going to spray a bit lighter and lift it. These ones can be sharper. So this is what I mean. These are the texture templates that I use frequently. 
um, only just to add effects into the artwork so again you're spraying freehand and then using these to speed up the effects process. Nearly done. We can blend out from that center section as well. So blend out the shadow. It's been a pretty fun one to do, this particular template. So if you haven't already, check out the other ones that I've done using some of the Airshot Skull templates. This one's probably a little bit harder because the, the template is not super duper accurate as far as the design. You've got to make up a lot of it. So, um, you know, by all means, I hope that the video helps you to, to be able to do that but if you're not sort of good at drawing or making up characters you might find this one a bit more difficult but still fun to use. The transparency of the template was helpful but I don't think it's essential. I think your traditional mylar is still probably the best bet. Alright let's leave it at that. Um, what I might do is actually, I want to get a bit more grain in there, so I'm going to just splatter it a bit as well. So I'll just use this. So I'm just using the, well, paddle pop stick and just going to angle my airbrush down on a slight angle here. You can see the needle's pretty much touching. What'll happen is the paint will build up on here and the air will then ricochet it onto the surface. The further I am like towards myself, the bigger the um, spatters will be. The further up towards the front of the, uh, the paddle pop stick, the finer the spatters will be. All right, so you can see here and getting some fine ones there. So it's just a nice way to build up controlled grain. And because the spray adhesive is in, sen in a sense uh, built up that texture, I thought, well, maybe we may as well just stick with it. I don't mind that it looks a bit more like a um, sort of grungy, rough painting. It doesn't necessarily have to be 100% smooth like most airbrush work. I think that can. Um, not look as effective. I think having a bit of grunge in there works nicely, especially the way I like to paint. I think I'll call that done. So let's just dry that off. So I'm just drying it with the air of the airbrush. And then we're going to peel this positive mask off, reveal our bat. Let's do that now. Fingers crossed it's all looking okay. There you have it. So that's definitely cleaned up the edge a bit. And, um, you know, made the, the design pop. So I think the, uh, the grunge and the spatterings helped. But definitely by um, using the positive mask, that's lifted it. So. I look at that now and I think, okay, I can come back in and darken sections off, but for the purpose of this video, um, I think that's decent enough for you guys to see how that was done. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.
until next time, feel free to check out any of our other videos and thanks again for watching. We do really appreciate it. In the meantime, if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe. We have plenty of step-by-step -step tutorials, quick tips, airbrush insight, showcase, live streams, and much more. You can also visit our website at airbrushasylum.com.au. Thanks for watching.